entrance of your word breathes gives light breathe upon your word O lord let there be light there is a spirit in us and it is the inspiration of the almighty god that gives us understanding so give us understanding father open our eyes that we might behold wonderful things from your glorious word and we thank you lord for doing this for in jesus massively mighty name we pray amen and amen and amen hallelujah glory be to god in the highest i'm going to be talking by the will of the lord about the uncommon leader and it's easy at this juncture for some of us to say oh well that's this is not for me let me touch off i know for a certainty that we all want to succeed in the things that god has placed in our charge we all want to bring a smile to god's face we all desire to be his people called by his name hallelujah whether we realize or recognize it or not we all want to be uncommon champions or common leaders hallelujah and who, who am i speaking to today i want to dedicate this special message first and foremost to the faith family leaders of the capital assembly in Abuja, the zonal leaders, the area leaders, those in the trenches, the pastors, the pastority, the leadership structure, those who believe God to be better, seekers who constantly are reaching for more. I want to dedicate it to Pastor Dr. David Elupo, Pastor Yoto Elupo, called alongside my wife and I, bearing the season, shaky season, the season in the womb, that's where we are. I'm bearing that season with us, with pride, with joy. I want to dedicate this to Esther. I want to dedicate it to Amorola. I want to dedicate it to Jebel. I want to dedicate it to Amorire, who isn't physically here with us, but she's very much here with us. In her heart, her goodwill, and her prayers. Secondly, I would like to dedicate this to those of you yes you out there in the secular world facing the devil daily in your business in your careers in your jobs in your schools working out the kingdom of god applying the kingdom in spite of all the opposition seeking to excel to be the head and not the tail thirdly i want to dedicate this to those who are chosen it's not a small thing to be chosen because the moment you are chosen is as if you unlock the rage of hell against yourself this is for you hallelujah i want to dedicate this perhaps more particularly and it encompasses all the other people I have mentioned because this describes you I want to dedicate it to those who don't fit in to those who don't quite fit in that something is different about you and that something is the work of God hallelujah Let me first explain about leadership to you. Leadership is the process of influencing a person or a group towards goals of beneficial permanence. And I might even say 
goals of beneficial importance. Hallelujah. Leadership is the process of influencing a person or group towards goals of beneficial permanence. Now, God desires that every one of his children should rise up as leaders in their areas of calling. They cannot be the salt of the earth if they do not positively influence the world around them. The idea of being the salt means we are the ones giving savor to the world around us. That's influence. That is influence. Hallelujah. There is no argument that Joseph in the scripture, and I'm not talking Joseph, the mother of uh, the father of Jesus. I'm talking about Joseph Ben Jacob. You know that's how they are named in the old co covenant, right? The first name of your father becomes your surname. So he's Joseph Ben Jacob. Hallelujah. Jesus would have been Jesus Ben Joseph. But because he's not actually the son of Joseph, from the start, they never called him Jesus Ben Joseph. They called him Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. And every other member of his household was Ben Joseph. Glory be to God. And Joseph was a chosen leader. As a matter of fact, if you read in the scripture, the Bible describes him when, 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 God was working through him to the salvation of Egypt and the redemption of his family. And he became the center of gravity of what God was doing at that time in the nations of the earth. He was described as being a God unto Pharaoh. What an interesting and amazing description to give a person, a leader. A person who rose from the most dire of circumstances to the highest of offices, a leader. A person who led with such dexterity that even in the house of slavery, where he was a slave, he became the ruler of the household. So his leadership was not positional. Sometimes we tend to think we are leaders when we are given a position. But Joseph is a classical example that you don't have to wait for a position to be a leader. You can be a leader in whatever circumstance and your influence will rise to the very top. Naaman's servant girl was a leader. It was her words that turned the heart of her master to do the right thing and do the needful. Otherwise, Neman would have gone back without his miracle, but he heeded the voice of the influence of but a servant girl. But a servant girl. And we see those kinds of leaders. We see people who lead from the front. We see people who lead from behind. We also people see people who lead from beside. I'm glad that I have a leader in my wife. And yes, she's my leader. Beside me, her influence is undeniable, salient, and powerful. Thank God for the 360 degree leader, according to John Maxwell, those who lead from the front, some who lead from behind, and others who lead from the side. Hallelujah. So Joseph was a chosen leader among his brethren, a chosen leader in the nation. Something about the nature of leadership bypasses the natural selection process or criteria. You see, God's criteria is not age. God's criteria for choosing leadership is not talent. God's criteria for choosing leadership is not popularity. God's criteria for choosing leaders is not personality. 
a look at the blatant disparity among all the different leaders that God used will show you that none of these things qualify you in the eyes of God to be a leader. When I said that I want to dedicate this to the chosen, I think it's important I qualify what I mean. I explain what I mean at that time. Have you ever found yourself in a position of leadership you were given? You didn't ask for it. You didn't lobby for it. You didn't angle for it. But someone put you there. Maybe they appointed you a, a prefect. Maybe they appointed you a student union leader. Maybe they appointed you a class rep. Maybe they appointed you to head a department. Is it in church? Is it at work? Maybe they put you in charge of a project. You are chosen. You are chosen. And sometimes there's a double jeopardy involved in being chosen, number one. Because the people you have been chosen to lead very often are not the same ones who chose you. And a lot of the time they are upset that you were chosen. Why were you not chosen, not them? What makes you better than them? What makes you more qualified than them? What makes you more deserving than them? And deep down you say, I know I don't deserve it, but God deserved it. So you have the additional challenge of manifesting the veracity behind your choice. It's now your responsibility to show them by your success, by your leadership, that you are a true godly choice. Is there somebody here what I'm saying? I don't know about you, but I have found myself in that situation again and again and again. Where I feel I, I wouldn't have wanted to speak, but yet I'm given the microphone. I wouldn't have wanted to lead, but yet I'm pushed forward to say something. I, I wouldn't have wanted to be seen, but here I am in the spotlight. I'm speaking to somebody out there and sometimes you might tower under that pressure the pressure of the rejection of your brothers the pressure of the rejection of those surrounding your position the pressure of wanting to prove a point the pressure but can I give you good news you have no point to prove all you need to do is to manifest and become that which the choice has made you. Hallelujah. God's criteria is not age. Joseph was not the oldest. Reuben was. God's criteria is not popularity. Joseph was not the most popular. Judah was. A good look at the disparity and the nature of the people that God chose as leaders in the past will confuse us if we were to judge it from our natural perspective. And what I hope to do with this message today is to help to bring us to God's perspective about leadership. Bring us to that point where we can see from God's point of view. Hallelujah. Now in case you're wondering why I chose these graphics, these are random pictures and graphics of people who have risen to leadership some in the christian world some in the secular world but undeniable positions of influence and they are random and the idea is just to depict leadership hallelujah if you don't like them it's okay but it's not about them it's just about the idea some people have leadership in a negative direction so please just you know <laughs> bear, bear with me if they wouldn't have been the people you would have chosen hallelujah look at these people Shira David Paul Samson Junior has anybody ever heard of Junior Do you know who Junior was 
Junior is that female apostle among the early apostles that Paul the apostle would mention her specifically and say she was prominent among the apostles hallelujah junior Esther you say was Esther a leader of course through her influence on the king I believe that was Artaxerxes am I right a whole nation God's chosen people were spared and were not killed that's Esther hallelujah glory be to God what about Nehemiah massive man of influence who built the world what about Moses who brought God's children out of the land of bondage what of Daniel what about John John the apostle the youngest among the apostles the absolute youngest and yet one of the greatly used apostles of God what about Jacob whom the Lord will switch his name and name him Israel Jacob the one who wrestled with God and prevailed hallelujah what about Samson most of us know Samson for his his iniquity and his bad choices choices and lack of self-control and we know him more for Delilah than as a man anointed of God and as a leader among his people oh he was a leader his influence upon the nation of Israel is so so hard to even begin to imagine because they had contented themselves with their position of subservancy with the Midianites, the position of defeat. It had become a norm to be broken, busted, and disgusted until Samson. And by his example and the fact that he stood against the Philistines, more judges could come forth after Samson. What an influence. Will we talk about Deborah? when you look at these people some of them were introverts others were extroverts some of them were loquacious others were soft-spoken some of them were driven others were gentle none of all these criteria we would think makes a leader there's a word we have in nigeria i think it's in all of africa i know it's in ghana as well as what gragra Gragra doesn't make you a leader. Gragra. Gragra is wannabe. Gragra is assertive. Gragra is pushy. You don't have to be pushy to be a leader. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's good to see you, Pastor Chinelo, to know you're connected. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. let's understand joseph let's introduce you to joseph joseph was one such leader he was a one out of 12 brothers in other words god had 12 people to choose from and he chose joseph the question for us today should be why Joseph was not the oldest, but yet he was chosen. Joseph was not from the first wife, and yet he was chosen. Joseph was not the most charismatic, yet he was chosen. He was certainly not the most popular, like I said Judah was, but yet he was chosen. Despite all of this, he was the one that God chose. God chooses with a completely different set of criteria and when he chooses the man or woman he chooses is always the minority not the majority is one out of 12. to be the chosen one implies that 11 people were rejected 
So perhaps we would learn much about what God rejects as much as learning what God chooses. Hallelujah. The characteristics of a leader, number one, every leader is a solver. Oh my goodness, can you imagine that? StreamYard has scattered by beautiful graphics. Every leader is a solver. A leader solves a problem or a situation, whether it is present or future. You know, sometimes we fail to realize God's hand in pushing up us, us up into leadership because we don't see the problem we are assigned to solve. It's not immediately apparent to us. Joseph was not called into leadership to solve an immediate problem. He was called to solve a future problem. The, his family was going to need deliverance. The nations of the earth were going to need the wisdom to survive the famine. Is there somebody understanding what I'm saying? So it's not always about the immediate. Sometimes we we despise our own leadership or we minimize the call of God because we can't see why. It was Mordecai who said to Esther, he says, if you don't take your place and if you don't exert your leadership or your influence at this time, deliverance will come from somewhere else. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But peradventure, this is why you are brought into such a position for such a time as this. For such a time as this. Dr. Ayoto, you might be wondering, what am I doing in this position? Pastor, pastor, who am I pastoring? Perhaps the Lord put you there for something miraculous, something glorious, something world shaking that is yet to be seen. Dr. David, perhaps God brought you into our lives and into this infant church. Something that is coming. Hallelujah. Oh, when my wife married me, believe me, she wasn't marrying what she saw. She was marrying for a time to come. Hallelujah! Now, I know you loved me. I know you are crazy, but I know, I know that one. Hmm? But it had not yet appeared. What shall appear? Is there somebody here what I'm saying? And even now, <laughs> Shanai, for the joy that is before us, we can despise the present, hey, looking down on the shame. Oh, Jabaro Soto Every leader is a problem solver. Every leader. Number two, every leader must be a dreamer. Vision is the principal evidence of leadership. A dreamer is one who sees what others don't see. You are in the same situation, but you are seeing something different. Every leader sees solution. Every leader sees another way. Every leader sees a better tomorrow. Every leader sees with the eyes of hope. Every leader, every God-ordained leader. There is no leader called into leadership by pessimism. There is no leader who will climb into the throne of leadership, climb into the position of influence by giving up, by calling it quits. No leader says it cannot be done. No leader. The very sign, the very signature of leadership is that you say we can 
do this. When everybody says it's impossible to get an A in that course, somebody rises and says, we can do this. And somebody says the church cannot exceed 200 in Coventry. Somebody rises up and says, all things are possible to him that believes. And somebody says, when you come into the UK, you have to start as a floor sweeper, as a care worker. There is no other way. Somebody rises and says, for God himself will make a way. And somebody tells you that with your PhD, go and drive, drive an Uber. That's your place in this country. A leader says, no, I can see something better. Am I speaking to somebody today? Every dreamer becomes a leader. And every leader must be a dreamer. Can I say that again? every dreamer will eventually become a leader every leader is a dreamer every dreamer is known by his dream and for his dream that's what you're known for and that's what you're also identified by your dream will make you stand out the moment you embrace a dream you can no longer fit in it will affect the way you behave, it will affect the way you talk, it will affect the way you think, it will affect the way you carry yourself. It will single you out and it will separate you from your brothers. So I say, can you dare to dream? Can you dare to celebrate that idea inside of you that seems so contrary to what everybody else is holding on to, hanging on to? is consigned to that belief that the belief that it can be better there can be a greater tomorrow that belief that there's a better way that belief that there's a future for our land that belief that we can make it great to see you amanda your dream will invite resentment into your life do you know what i mean by that people will hate you for your dream everybody loves when we are uniform I was explaining sometime back. I said, when God builds, He builds with stone. When man builds, like at the Tower of Babel, we build with brick and mortar. The difference between stone technology, the way God builds, is that every stone is different. And each one goes to the position where it fits. However, in brick and mortar, mortar technology, that's brick and cement, every stone is uniform. And then we are constrained together through a motor or a glue, a set of rules, do's and don'ts. So that's why the world always looks for people who fit in, people who conform. Romans chapter 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is your acceptable or reasonable act of worship. And be not conformed to this world. God is looking for non-conformists. People who the leadership seed inside them will cause them to pop out of their environments and positions. Non-dreamers don't like dreamers all because dreamers make them feel uncomfortable. Is there somebody here what I'm saying? That one person who says we're going to kill this, we're going to smash it. Note that all his other brothers hated him more for his dream than for anything else. Only a leader is ready to accommodate the persecution that a dream brings. Hallelujah. Thank you. Number three, a dreamer is a reacher. Are you with me? 
a dreamer is always reaching for more every leader has an inner hunger for more he's not easily impressed by what is going on rachel named him joseph because the name meant god shall add god shall add i thank god for what he's done but my god shall add i thank god for how far i have come but my god shall add bishop but you've done so much in your life that by this time we should retire relax and enjoy the fruit of your labor but you know what i believe god shall add god shall add why why aren't you satisfied you did the first masters you were top of your class in architecture you did the second masters you made the first class in educational leadership you did the third masters in media and culture and communication first class top your class again but yet you go back to school and sit with those the age of your children your supervisor just a little older than your children your professor younger than you are and yet you sit through that why would you do that because god shall add a leader is a richer a leader doesn't stop at anything he keeps reaching for more i can improve i can do better i can know better this can be better for all of us i can serve better hallelujah number four a leader is loyal a leader is more focused on pleasing his superior rather than pleasing his contemporaries or his subordinates a leader is never one of the boys this is where many people fail in leadership because they are too conscious of their colleagues if you stay around if you hang around you stay around but if you look up you move up is there somebody here what i'm saying man you know what jesus said he says that i may do the will of him that sent me those were the words of jesus that i might do the will of him he was always more mindful of the expectations of god than he was of the expectation of his brethren the expectation of men would kill you as a leader you remember the bible speaks about jesus when they brought multitudes to him who are sick and so on and so forth he tuned into the expectation of god god says go to a quiet place and go and load up against the expectations of men thousands of sick people he leaves them, goes to a mountain place to be alone. And then the Bible says, when he was sent, he came down and he healed them all. Oh, if a man's way pleases God, even his enemies will be at peace with him. Is there somebody here what I'm saying? Look at the life of Joseph. I'm reading from Genesis chapter 37, verse 2. It says, This is the history of Joseph. Of Jacob I'm sorry Joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brothers and the lad was with the sons of Bilna and the sons of Zilpha his father's wife and Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father excuse me do you know what that means these guys would go out into the field and they would just take one of the lambs and make shish kebab are you hearing what I'm saying they will just pick one of the, the goats and they will do suya with it. They would eat it. And then they would bring some sign and then show the father and say, some wild animal came. 
and i'm sure jacob would always be wondering why is it only my flock that wild animals keep killing they don't kill my neighbors it's just always i mean the lions just love my own goats and my lamb but jacob will come back and say look that let me be sincere with you there was no lion the lion was the lion of the tribe of judah it was judah it was judah and Reuben followed. I, I tried to tell them not to do it. That it wasn't right. But they did it. Daddy, don't be angry with them. Please speak some sense into their head. And you know what happened? The Bible says, and his brothers hated him for that. Are you ready to be a leader? Are you sincerely ready to be a leader? Do you realize the implication of leadership in that regard? hallelujah to be a leader it means you are ready for people to misjudge you ready for them to misunderstand you but you recognize that your loyalty is to the one in authority over you hallelujah there's also a flip side to this and i only just saw it as i was meditating about it this morning a leader knows that his primary loyalty is to the one that sent him, to the one that supervises him, to the one that is above him. You be a person. You be a person that stands out. Dare to be. Dare to be the one that comes earliest to your place of work. That your boss will meet you there and ready. Dare to be the one that hangs around and continues working when everybody else is rushing home. Dare to be that person. Have you noticed that most, most bosses and most owners would outstay their employees in place of work? Why? Because they are stakeholders in it. And their eyes are always constantly looking for people who will share the burden with them. Not one of the boys. Ah, boy, five o'clock, don't knock on. It is 30 minutes to go and they are clocking down. You are no more doing any work. You are waiting. You are looking. Five minutes, then you go to the bathroom and hang around there for a while. Because, man, I'm done for the day, man. I'm done. Hallelujah. The flip side is this. Not only must your loyalty be upward, but the investment of your time and focus must also be upward jesus said i am the vine you are the branches any branch that abides in me will bring forth much fruit are you hearing what i'm saying sometimes we get so carried away we think okay i've done what is right my leadership is to my boss and i'll bring any bad report to my boss i'll report anything i will do exactly you know what is expected of me but then we don't spend time with that boss abide in me and you will bring forth much fruit that is speaking directly about the messiah he's speaking about god but the principle still remains applicable are you hearing what i'm saying every person who would dare to seek opportunities of fellowship will invest into every opportunity to stand in the presence of greatness to stand in the presence in the audience of those above them will receive an impartation for success even god wants us to be with him to fellowship with him and i said you know the lord convicted me of that you I, I mean imagine me trying to pastor without god pastor without intimacy with god i mean i know what god has asked me to do i have the blueprint i have the instructions and that's it so i cut god off and i start to pursue the will of god the work of god and not the god of the work i don't know if somebody is hearing what i'm saying it's not only your loyalty that should be vertical your longing should be vertical that i might dwell in your presence i love to hear you speak my god and my king i love 
love to hear you talk I long for your wisdom and it doesn't just apply to God it applies to your supervision it applies to those that are placed in position over you is there somebody here what I'm saying enjoy every opportunity take advantage of time to pick their brains to understand how they think why they think why during that surgery did you use this tool instead of that tool I'm accustomed to this why is it that in this organ organization you structure this like that that's how you grow i'm sitting today and instructing in media invited to be guest lecturer for those in media studies and i didn't go through formal media studies training not for my bachelor's but i'm instructing those who did their bachelor's when i did it at master's level it was a fusion of so many different things it was communication it was media studies it was sociology it was media production it was everything put together but i have to stand as a specialist where did that specialization come from it came from me asking questions Today, I honor Dr. Panam Percy Paul as my first instructor in sound and audio engineering. The first person. I asked him a billion questions. I almost wore him, I wore him out. When he got tired of me, I paid for the session. So he had no choice. I would pick a song and I say, I want to record how much is your studio charge? Here is the money. And then when we are going, my mind is not on the song. My mind is on why are you doing what you did? Why, why, why did you bounce it like that? Why did you put it on track three? Why did you duplicate it? Why did you double it? What's the point? How does that achieve? You said you heard the distortion. I didn't hear the distortion. Show me how to hear distortions. Show me how your ears are that sensitive that you pick things that other people cannot hear. How is it that you know that I'm playing a C chord without looking at the keyboard and just by the sound. I asked a billion questions. I relished the opportunity to be in his presence. That's the same way I relish the opportunity to be in the presence of Dr. Philip Paul Mukunga. I relish the opportunity to be in the presence of Professor Ishaya Aldo. I relish the opportunity to be in the presence of Reverend Mrs. Victoria Aldo. I relish the opportunity to be in the presence of Apostle Gabriel Oduyemi. I relish to be in the presence of Dr. Adamson Aroma. I relish to be in the presence of Bishop Harry Jackson. I relish every opportunity to be in the presence of the mentors God has put over me, Dr. Gary Westcombe. I relish every opportunity I have to be in the presence of Bishop Margaret Idahosa. Every opportunity I can get, I'm asking questions. I'm asking questions. I have people I mentor who, when they're in my presence, they're constantly trying to impress me. So there are more focused on covering their ignorance than exposing it hey hey guys if you want to be a leader you can cover your ignorance in the presence of those you lead but please expose it in the presence of those that lead you that's the only way to go up not a fear of rebuke, it's a longing for growth. Is there somebody hearing me? It's a longing for growth. I messed up. I messed up. Hallelujah. Finally, a leader is different. Are you with me? A leader is the exception and not the rule. A leader is one out of twelve. If you want to be part of the majority, then just step back from leadership look away from greatness forget about being a solution forget about being a positive influence if everybody in your class talks back at their parents choose to be different if everybody else mumbles and pouts when they are corrected choose to be different are you with me? Everybody else is 
cursing and swearing and doing all of those things a leader can say i recognize that that's what is popular but i choose to be different moses was different daniel was different every person that is used in leadership and excels is different is this a blessing to somebody today hallelujah I want you to look at the family tree so you understand how messed up this guy's family structure was because life happens come on look at somebody and say life happens because too many of us wait until things are perfect I'm not a leader because I didn't come from the right kind of family setup I'm not a leader because I wasn't born British I'm not a leader because I don't have sufficient funds I'm not a leader because I don't have this qualification or that qualification I'm not a leader because we keep looking for things in the natural but it can't be more messed up than the family of Jacob and I'm going to end it here for now I will we'll deal with this the following week. Glory be to God. My wife is going to be preaching next week. Is it next week? It is okay, yes. You think I'm not going to put it up? Yeah, not serious. Yeah. Life happens. I mean, look at I want you to see this dysfunctional family. I mean, Sarai married Abraham. On the other end of the planet, Nahor married Milkal and gave back to Bethuel. Bethuel gave birth to two children, Rebekah and Laban. Sarai and Abraham give birth to Isaac. Isaac goes and hooks up with Rebekah by divine arrangement. And he has two children, Esau and Jacob. Now we are tracing the family of Jacob. Everything else seems so straightforward up to now. This guy just... He just busts the pattern and he scatters everything. He tried to get Rachel, ended up with Leah, and Leah was like a rabbit. One, two, three, four. She has landed Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, like that. Quick succession. Bam, 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 bam. Jacob must have been doing over time. <laughs> And in the midst of that, after the birth of Judah, Rachel gets the wise idea that she's going to give her maid called Zilpha. No, not Zilpha. Bilna, I think it is. It was even Leah that did it first. She had one, two, three, four. That was not enough. Then she gave him her maid again. Wow. I beg your pardon. And she lands a few more. Dan and Naphtali. Okay, yes, it was, they, are, they are from Bilna. So Rachel wants to compete with her sister. So she says, take my maid. And then they have an AP two singles Dan and Naftali then Leah turns around and says oh really? two can play at that game so she gives her maid as well and she gives birth to God and Asha after that God opens her own womb and she drops Issachar and Zebulun. And at the same time, God has mercy on Rachel and she drops Joseph and crowns it up with Benoni. Now imagine with me, imagine with me what it would have been like to live in that kind of family politics. A wife who doesn't feel wanted, a husband who is just enjoying all the attention, children competing with one another. You ate my mandrakes, you didn't eat my mandrakes. 
I mean, it was a terribly dysfunctional home. Yet, in the midst of that dysfunction, God was able to bring a leader out. In the midst of chaos, God can raise a leader. In the midst of inadequacy, God can raise a leader. Listen to me, somebody, and listen well. Sometimes people wonder, why is it that Africans coming to the United Kingdom, Africans coming to the United States, Africans coming into Europe, and I mean a lot of Africans excel. They are the ones going in and getting scholarships to do PhDs. They are the ones rising to the top in their professions and stuff like that. Why? found this trend in the United States where African Americans were antagonistic towards the African immigrants because African immigrants seem to be getting the better jobs, better positions. They have the same color of skin but rising much higher in society. Why? The reason was because out of our problems, out of our chaos, out of our poverty, out of our lack, came a drive to succeed. Out of our affliction, out of darkness, God says, let there be light. Is there somebody here what I'm saying? When I showed you this, this plan, this map, just to help you to see the chaos that Joseph was drawn from. Sometimes, people would say to you, don't marry from that family. Have you heard that before? Because the man had more than one wife. He was polygamous. Or he, he had girlfriends. Or he was unfaithful to his mom. Or Don't marry from that family because the mother was divorced. Or she has children from four different men. So, so don't marry. They are untouchable, unclean. But yet we see the contrary with God that can become the crucible that brings forth purity that can become the birthing place of a determination to excel that can become the place where god dips his hand into dirt and plucks out a diamond hallelujah what natural people will run from the heart of god of God runs to and he lifts us out of that iniquity lifts us gives us a different value imagine that Joseph having come out of such dysfunction enters into the house of Potiphar and yet instills order Potiphar's wife said, come in to me. He said, no, my master may have given me everything in his hand and put under my charge, but he did not give me you. It's a sense of order. In the chaos of where the children of Jacob were killing his lamb and having feasts and lying to him, Jacob would curse one of his sons, Reuben, he says because you came into your father's bed you know what that means he slept with one of Jacob's concubines that dysfunction and yet from that environment a Joseph is full of integrity that he has the opportunity free of charge and he declines and says no I will not sin against God in this manner is there somebody here what I'm saying we cannot look at leadership we cannot look for the seeds of greatness by looking at the natural. Hallelujah. I want to pray for every leader. I feel of God to stop at this juncture. I want to pray for every leader. Precious Father, I thank you for every leader at the sound of my voice, every person whose heart is yearning for more, every person who dares that I can be different, every person who says, God, here I am, use me. 
in whatever context, whatever situation, whatever position that you are in. Father, let your hand of grace and mercy touch them. Work in them to will and to do according to your good pleasure, my Lord and my King. Lord, let your name be glorified. I want to pray for those of them who are discouraged, precious Lord. The Bible says that you are the lifter up of our head. Against discouragement, I declare that hope cometh in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes! Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? I will yet hope in God, who is the light of my salvation. The light of your salvation arises now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for every leader who has given up, every leader who has been battered by circumstances and the rejection of people around you, even those who to encourage you have spat out words, fiery darts, have pierced your heart today receive healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Diamonds in the rough. You may be covered with dirt right now, but God is polishing you. God is working with you. And he's not going to give up on you. You may have made mistakes, but God is not Letting go of you. Father, thank you. So, Father, we are here before you. Thank you for the call of leadership. You are here and you've not been a leader, but you, as the word was going forth, you had a calling. You felt in your heart that it's time to step forward. The Bible talks about how the owner of a vineyard will go out early in the morning, then go out again and again. I want you to know that it's the Lord calling you. So just surrender yourself to the Lord where you are right now. You sense he's calling you to leadership. Ask him to help you. I just hear that word in my heart. About five people that are watching right now, you've just felt the strong conviction to step out as a leader. I just hear my heart, just ask the Lord to direct you to your mentor, that person that would help you, that would guide you. So Lord, we pray for these precious people that have heard the call. And we ask, oh Lord, that you direct them to their mentors and bring them into the new season. And Lord, we pray for healing, for you have come to confirm your word with signs and wonders following. For the Bible says that the earth is groaning for the release of the sons of God. Those who are mature and saying yes, I will lead. Those who feel that fire in their heart that they need to help one person. The Bible says if you have two coats, you can give one out. For you to be a leader, it doesn't mean you're leading 20 people at the same time. It can be just one person. To become a leader in your home. To become a leader in your marriage. To start to speak for the words even though you're not perfect. But you know this is what God is saying. And you are ready to submit yourself to that word. So Father... Confirm your word with signs and wonders yes. following right now. We pray healing because it's the children's bread. We pray healing upon leaders that are ready right yes. now. We pray healing upon everyone in the building and everyone on the platform that needs it right now. Father, we pray healing. We pray he that terrible migraine, we pray healing upon it in the name of Jesus. We continue to stand in the gap for healing for Wisdom Douglas, for Tinel Onumono. We use them as a point of contact, total restoration in the name of Jesus for charity. Lord, for Jacob, we speak healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We thank you. And I hear in my heart, the midwives became leaders because they helped to bring the purpose of God. In, in 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 exodus and so god is calling for midwives right now yes those who will see that Earth somebody Earth is wonderful somebody is there like a moses but needs to be brought forth 
into the limelight. Lord, we release midwives right now. It's not about you leading because you're coming out. It's about you helping other people to come out. And the Bible says God built their houses. Lord, as you hear that calling to be a midwife, God is going to build your house. God is going to strengthen you. We speak peace in Jesus' name. Now I'm here to encourage you and to challenge you to release that which is in your hand that we may see the outpouring of that which is in God's hand. Every time that I cry, you hear Because God is faithful. And no matter the times that we'll find ourselves in, we have a reason to rejoice because our God delivers us from every affliction. Every time when I call for help, you're there for me. And because we trust Him, we come to Him with confidence. And it's a time to give. And you woke me up this morning. We give first of all because we honor the Lord, because He's our Lord. Now may He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. I am grateful. You've been so faithful. You've been so faithful to me. You have been faithful. God not out of compulsion some people think that at a time of pressure is a time when you hoard and you hold back it's a time to keep because you don't know what will happen but I challenge you when you dare to release your faith to give unto God you are giving God an opportunity to manifest when you die what can I say oh Lord you forgive me again not again Whoa. I just want to testify I just want to glorify you are the one who makes me sing you make me sing my heart away The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It means it takes submission to his lordship to connect with his care. You have been faithful. Lord, I am grateful. Lord, I am grateful. I want to encourage you right now to join us if you are persuaded to do so. Give right now, and uh, as I speak, uh, the number and the account details is being scrolled through your screen. Pick up your device. Oh, I know it's already with you. Make that transfer now, and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. so tremendously blessed in this service my life will never remain the same i know the same is with you also wherever you are watching us from now before you go don't forget like our facebook page and every time you connect go a step further to share that page to your friends and on your, on your own timeline so you help us take this service further and help many more people to connect with us faster thank you so much Till we'll see you next time. God bless you.